Okay, so let's now look at a Slim integration. And in terms of actually integrating this into Slim normally, it would work in exactly the same way. So we would be able to use the dump function as normal anywhere we wanted, whether that's in our controllers, within our normal routes, within our bootstrap file, it would just work in exactly the same way. What we're really concerned about is how to do this for views and how to do this for Twig. So we're gonna be creating our own extension for this and kind of fiddling around with it so we can get this beautiful output within our views, which of course is really helpful. So let's start by going ahead and just pulling Slim into this project. I've kept everything here with the set handler because this is gonna work in exactly the same way. Uh, we're not gonna be setting up a full Slim project because uh, you know it's uh, a little long to do that in such a short series, but let's wait for this to finish. We'll go ahead and pull in, create some routes, create some views uh, and see how we get on. Okay, so that's finished. The only other thing I want to do is go ahead and pull in Twig View, which you may have worked with uh, within Slim before, it just allows us to render views with Twig. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in as well. And what I'm also gonna do is pull in this container binding into my application. Uh, so I have this ready to render views. So let's go ahead and just uh, set our Slim app up. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new Slim app instance just here. And why don't we just turn debugging on as well, just so uh, we can see if we get any problems here. So let's uh, pass into here and override our default config on our container. Under settings, let's say display error details, and let's set this to true. So down here then, we're gonna go ahead and run our app. And what I'm also gonna do is go ahead and grab out my container. So we're gonna say app get container, like so. We're gonna paste that in that we just pulled over from the Slim documentation. And I'm just gonna change over to the, the path to my template. So in this case, I would normally create a templates directory or something like resources and views. Just to keep things simple, let's go ahead and create a templates directory. And into here, we'll say something like home.twig. This is our home view. So you may have seen this before. We need to update our path to our templates. So I'm gonna grab the current directory and I'm gonna go into templates. And for the purpose of this course, I'm just gonna turn caching off. So now that we have this set up, we can define out a very basic route here and render that view. So let's go ahead and say get homepage. Let's pull in our request and our response. And we're gonna be testing our dumper on our request and our response, because uh, these are quite complex objects. I'm gonna go ahead and return this view render, passing through our response, choosing the view that we want to render, and that's pretty much it for now. So if we come over to our project and give this a refresh, sure enough, we see our home view. So by default then, if we want to start debugging things within a slim view or twig in general, we actually have to turn debugging on. So let's go ahead and look at how this works. So let's say debug true this is just something that's off by default which kind of makes sense because we don't always want this to be on now if we come over to home and we go ahead and try and dump something out maybe we want to pass through the response object into our view and we can either do that by saying response here passing through that response object or anything you're passing down to your view i'm just kind of using this because it's already there for us now to actually start playing around with this what we would have to do is as well as add our slim twig extension, which gives us things like path for and base URL, we would also need to add another extension in here. And this is the twig extension debug. So if we come over to our home view, now that we're passing down our response, what we should be able to do is something like dump and then passing in what we want to dump. So this could be absolutely anything. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, you can see that sure enough that has been dumped out. Now, if we don't include this, notice that it won't work. So we won't have access to that dump function. And of course, if we turn debug off, then we can't do that either, or rather it just doesn't output anything. So what we kind of want to do is we're gonna kind of ignore this debug here. You can go ahead and later hook this in to check this uh, is true before you start using it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just ignore this for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and create my own extension to make use of the Symfony var dumper uh, inside of Twig within this context. So how would we do this then? Well, what we would actually have to do first of all, just to keep things nice and tidy, is go ahead and set up auto loading. You may have done this before for your projects, but in this case, I'm gonna use PSR4 auto loading uh, to load under an app namespace, and I'm gonna load from an app directory 
uh, just within the root of my project. So I'm going to go ahead and create this. This is normally where you'd place all your models or your controllers and stuff like that. Now in this case, what I do is I create a views directory and I create any custom twig extensions that I want to inside of here. Now in this case, maybe I would have a debug extension. So let's go ahead and create debug extension so we can go ahead and attach that and we can kind of cheat and we can open up the twig extension to grab the structure of this so if you just pull this open and copy this over we can tidy this up without having to really write much code so i'm going to paste that in there i'm going to go ahead and open it uh, and just before i forget i'm going to go ahead and do a composer dump auto load just so uh, my psr4 auto loading comes into effect so let's get rid of this comment and change this over to app views because this is now part of our project and we know that this is now called a debug extension. It still extends the base twig extension. We're not passing any dependencies through to this. It's going to be very simple. We're not getting a name here, so we're not going to define that out. And we don't need these methods here either. We're going to go ahead and introduce our own methods. So the way that this works is we can define which functions we can use within our views. Now, in this case, I want mine to be called dump. And here is the method that we're calling on this class. So we reference this. We call this method when we use this inside of our views. Now I'm going to get rid of this uh, old array syntax here and just use square brackets and we're pretty much set up to go. So what I can now do is as long as I have a dump function or method rather on this class, so we can go ahead and create this either public or protected, it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and create this. And just to kind of test this, let's return ABC. And what I'm going to do is over in index where I'm setting everything up, obviously this could be anywhere in your project. I'm going to go ahead and add that extension that I've just created. So let's add an extension, much like we did with the twig debug extension. And I'm going to create a new app views debug extension. And now we should have a dump function within our views. So if we come over to home, this should work as normal. Let's go ahead and check it out. But this time we know that we're just returning ABC. We're not actually doing anything uh, useful with this at the moment. Now, what we can do is within our debug extension, we can accept something into this. So for example, a variable, and we could go ahead and we can return that variable. Now we don't want to do that. We want to go ahead and wrap this using the dump function that we've already been looking at throughout the series. So in this case, we just wrap this with dump and that is pretty much it. We're done. We can go ahead and we can use this now within here and that will output using Symfony var dump component. So let's go over to the browser give that a refresh and sure enough, we see the response that we passed through to our view earlier. So there we go. If you do work with a slim framework, which I assume you are since you're watching this part, then you can go ahead and use this anywhere now. So you can use it in here, as we saw in the introduction, you can go ahead and dump out the request if you want to check what data you have available. So you can go ahead and do that if you want to. You can go ahead and check anything in here you know, it just really, really helps when you are either learning or you're building something and you're not too sure what you have available. But you also now have this using a very simple extension inside of your views as well. So if you did need to dump anything out, then you have that available.